and Buddha. But on days where it's just me, I think it's kind of fitting that it's me and Buddha. Uh, all right, here's another little mini segment of me and Buddha, or Buddha and me. Got a little stuck, I guess, um, on talking about them. I wasn't ready. I hadn't done the emotional work. Don't really, I won't walk you through all the different levels of that. And yes, I know I've got crazy hair, still no makeup, no improvement there at all. No, and that's my phone and it's probably spam. And we'll end it's video. been about three years since um, BD left and I have not dated at all in that time frame. And I never thought I would be back on the market again. I never thought I'd be going through this experience again. And so it's fascinating and it's just a fascinating experience to be going through and I haven't even fucking started it yet. And it's still fascinating um, because to go from a place where you never... And what we were talking about this morning on my journey is the French revolution. Uh, I am a nerd. Be prepared. There are going to be some nerdy videos here as we do this. And and I got a little stuck. And I think as all of us do, sometimes we turn to the internet to procrastinate when we get a little stuck on what we're supposed to be doing. And I went down a, a certain path that somehow led me to a mini history of the French revolution. Um, I like the idea of revolutions, you know, so um, I'm sure they're actually, you know, quite hard to live through when you're going through it. But um, it was a fantastic video. First of all, it just makes me, you know, appreciate the internet and the level of education. I probably learned more about the French Revolution in this 10 minute video than I did throughout all of like, you know, world history in um, high school. Now, BD and I um, continue finding ourselves in court at different times. It has been a long, hard, brutal divorce and um, with a lot of fighting and it was just fascinating um, understanding the French Revolution and understanding that really, oh, but I, I want people to know that there's something about the French Revolution going on, um, either worldwide or at least in my life, and that it was important to me that I revisited um, the, you know, I think, sorry, you're going to understand how day-to-day um, -day sometimes I live my life these days, but um, I think it's the beginning of spring break and that I do not have the children now for a week and a half, and so... All right, another installment of me and Buddha. Uh, all right, we're gonna try again here. All right, clearly I've still got some emotional work to do on this topic because I've had to start this video a lot. Maybe I'll do some of the um, the beginning takes so you can see how many times I've had to start this video, which often is a sign that I've still got a lot of emotional work to do. But in any case, here you are, me and Buddha another installment on things where around some resistance and didn't but it was also maybe a procrastination technique to not get at what i actually want to say on this video which is that oh my gosh all right it's not even funny at this point i have restarted this video so many times um so clearly i've got a lot of emotional work to do is what i take that as a sighting uh of because i just i can't believe how many times i've had to start this video all right, I am definitely gonna be including all the outtakes so you can see how many times I've had to restart this video. And then maybe that'll just serve as encouragement or motivation for those of you that are also stumbling along on some of these larger projects in life because I have not had to restart any of my videos as much as I've had to restart this video. And I would say it is probably definitely because of the topic. So with that intro, um, here we are, another episode of me. I'm Buddha, which means I am alone. Um, and actually it's that, you know, it's spring break. I don't have my children. I have spent the past few years during all these vacation times when I don't have my children, um, being depressed, mourning that I don't have my children, um, mourning what I've had to go through in life. And I'll tell you, it's taken me three years and here I am on this break being like, Hey, I feel all right. 
and I'm sure my children are going to be having a blast and I should go be having fun also. And so I feel like I'm going to say it very tentatively, but I might be ready to start dating. A little weird because as you can see, I am still not wearing any makeup and not brushing my hair on a regular basis. Well, I do comb it with my fingers just so everybody knows, um, but I'm not even bothering to brush it. Let's put it this way. I'm not bothering to brush it earlier than my video. And I still have not worn a bra on a consistent basis in a long time. And I really would have thought I would have attack those projects first, but sometimes you don't get to control the order of it. So does it mean that I'm going to go explore dating as a crazy hot mess or create a dating profile when I'm still a hot mess? I guess it does. And maybe that's the motivation I need. Maybe it's like starting going back to the gym where you don't get to go back to the gym looking fantastic. You know, that like the process of going back to the gym maybe gets you to invest in your gym gear or invest in what your routines are going to be and you navigate it. So maybe I'm someone who, um, hopefully I don't meet like the person who's supposed to be my next soulmate, like right out of the gate. And then they pass me by because they're like, oh my gosh, she, they don't even know what I have the potential of looking like when I pull myself together. I don't know, but I think I almost have to have a few dates and that that would be the motivation to figure out what's my closet or where my closet even is. Um, because honestly, I don't know. I have a very limited wardrobe that I keep here in the guest house. And I think I have boxes and boxes of clothing in the garage, but there's a lot of boxes and boxes of stuff in the garage. So I, I think I actually need that motivation. So I think rather than it's starting with hair and makeup, um, which I don't seem to have manifested yet, it's going to start with creating a dating profile and then that then maybe that's going to get me to do something. I don't know, but isn't it exciting? Cause this, I think is going to be a real interesting part of the journey. So I would love to hear from those of you who know what I'm supposed to be doing to create a dating profile, because you know, the last dating services I used were match.com and eHarmony. Um, and I have a feeling that those probably still exist, but maybe they're not as hip as they used to be. And I know some of you are now saying, Sarah, but they did work for me until I guess they didn't, right? So um, yeah, help me out. Tell me what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, do I take fresh photos? Is it that bad if I'm using photos of myself from a decade ago earlier than having children? Do I look that different than a decade ago? I don't know. These are all interesting questions as we go on this journey, but this is probably what I'm gonna be vlogging about during the next few days as I'm by myself. And we'll see, I wonder from having said this right now, I'm fascinated to know how long does it take me to go on my first date? And I would assume by now, given that the whole pandemic is crumbling, that people are dating in person again, but um, maybe not. Maybe everybody does a Zoom date first. So is it just, do I just, am I just doing Zoom dates or am I meeting people in public? I don't even know what the protocols are. You know, how much do you text or message or do you can you just like set up a bunch of zoom i don't know i don't know and and i'm kind of finished with this right now but maybe in some other videos i'll walk you through my historical dating approaches but i think i'm going to need some guidance so i would love to hear from you all um i feel like you are my team who's going to help me do this and i want to be able to help other people do this so let's figure it out you know there is an energy there's an energy of being married and there's an energy of being single and Really have a long way to go on being single, right? Because I've just told you I haven't dated in three years, but um, I've done anything, you know, since being left or never thought I'd be back on the market again, I guess. Um, but I don't know. I'm surprised that men seem to understand this um, or just seem to pick up on the fact that you are single again um, and it's like they smell it. And I know it's the whole thing about pheromones and all of this, and maybe they do smell it. And I never thought you would be single again to them being single again, again, something I've not really embraced yet even. Um, it's just interesting because I care so much less. I don't know whether it's because I'm no longer looking for the perfect person, whether this person doesn't, I don't need to have children with this person. I'm not looking for this person to save me. I'm not looking for this person to support me. I'm just looking for a person. Um, a part, I mean, even a partner is a stretch. I don't know what I am looking for right now. I don't know. Uh, and I think all the other times I was out in the market, it really was. I was looking for my baby daddy. I was looking for a husband. I was looking for at least a long-term relationship of some sort. And I'll tell you, 
at this point. I don't even know if I'm looking for that. I'm looking for figuring out what I am looking for. I'm looking for adventure. I'm looking for um, just even understanding or seeing what's out there. Or what does it mean to be single again when you never thought you were going to be single again? Or what does it mean to be single again at this age? Or what does it mean to be single again when you already have children? And it's such a different perspective. All these different things that we are going to go into um, on this channel or on this journey, if you want to go on this journey with me. Um, and I'm excited to be going on this journey at this point. Obviously, for many years, I wasn't. Um, but now I've made peace with that. And here's this exciting journey. And maybe this is like going through an unwanted divorce. Maybe this is the one gift. The one gift you get is to go do this again or do it a whole lot of times or just to have that freedom. Um back that you didn't have. And again, I actually didn't have a problem not having that freedom. I was never the most active dater. I was never in that many relationships. It was never the part of my life that I, you know, fully explored or unpackaged or prioritized. So it's be very interesting going on it. Um, again, because I'm actually more interested in it now than I was even to begin with. So, but what I really want to say is to be impressed. So that's what Buddha and I have to say this morning on that topic. Right, it is, um, I guess it should have been gone longer than two days, but it feels like it's day number two um, of spring break and, you know, spring break in which I don't have my children. And as you heard, if you're watching these videos in order the previous day, um, I was feeling really good and, um, and I had a lot of things I wanted to achieve and accomplish and felt like I had done a couple few years worth now of making peace that I don't get my children on all of their breaks from school this day not so much so clearly um you know declared victory maybe a little early there just feel like going to bed last night even it was like oh where are my children I want my children and um this morning uh this day it is a beautiful day I put in a few hours of work but it's kind of like you break from your work and what do I want? I want my children and they are nowhere near here. So um, just kind of, you know, want to acknowledge everyone who's somewhere on this journey of learning to only live with 50% of their children that is day by day. And I think it gets better, um, but it's still really hard. And I guess I'll also say is I get, um, you know, given that it's been a few years now, I've heard a lot of different people's take on it. And I actually get really offended by the people. And I even had a lawyer um, who did this. It was a male lawyer. He's like, no, no, you're living the dream now. You only have to have 50% of your children. Um, you can go party and do things and balance and then appreciate them when they're there. And I'll tell you, yeah, you know, after a few years, maybe there are some days where I feel like that. But I honestly think that's not really the experience at all. I feel like, yeah, if you're with your children 100% of the time, maybe, maybe then you dream about a life where you're not responsible for your children 100% of the time, even if you have help or with a nanny or something. Um, but I'll tell you when your children actually, when 50% of your children, children's childhood is actually taken from you, um, I certainly wasn't celebrating. It was not something I was happy about. Um, and this many years later, it's still something that really hurts. It feels really unnatural as a mom with young children, especially to not have them on non-work days. And you know, I'm recording this video on a Saturday. And so I'm kind of talking about this because what am I outside doing? Taking the garbage and recycling out, um, just as some sort of excuse to get outside and feel the nice weather and everything because normally I have my children to help me do that um but on work days and they're not here sometimes I don't open the door and go outside if I don't have anything social going on or if I'm just like plowing through things so um I do just so you know just so everybody knows I use taking the garbage and the recycling out as my excuse to get the door open get some fresh air figure out what's going on in the real world and um and maybe it gives me inspiration to go for a walk or do something else or make social plans that I'm not social yet of a person. But, you know, it's interesting also because some people then are like, oh, God, you know, now you sound depressed and this or that. And it's like, no, I just think when you are processing something, even if it's throughout numerous years and it's not the way you want it, that doesn't mean you're depressed. It means you're still processing it and you're still figuring out how to transform and change your life and set it up for success. And, um, you know, I 
don't struggle with depression. Um, I have a lot of empathy for anyone who does. That'll be another video. Um, but uh, just because you are not always happy um, does not mean you're depressed. And it's like, I've had a very productive day. I've done a lot of things and I've done them happily. But then those moments where you're like, oh, I feel like now I would want to go have a break and you know, do silly things outside with my children and join them in whatever adventures they're having. And they're nowhere, uh, like I said, nowhere near here right now. So, um, what I also use an excuse and sometimes it's hard, um, to go do it. Even it's interesting. Sometimes taking out the garbage and recycling is more reliable way to get me outside than this, but, um, to go water the plants, you know, and it's kind of, I feel like if you're someone who only has 50% of your children, um, that you have these ongoing projects. And so some of them can't make it. I'd love it if the plants were able to make it until the children got back, but especially with spring break and with warmer weather here, they're not going to make it. So if I don't go check on these peas, if I don't go water these plants, um, you know, then the project doesn't go. Even if it's not my personal favorite thing to do alone, I think probably because it's just a reminder that my children are not here. Um, so we're gonna go check on the pea plant. Everybody who's following this channel all knows how much I love those peas. It is, you know, we, we spend a few days when the children were here watering it a lot. And definitely if we water it a lot, it produces a lot more peas. So I have a feeling there's a lot of peas on it right now. Um, but I also have a feeling it's gonna be a little cranky at me for not having watered it the past few days. So just hoping it hasn't totally died. Um, that would be sad for my children um, and me. Um, so let's go water some pea plants. Um, it's really the peas and the food producing plants they get me motivated to go do it. And then I'll happen to water the plants around it that need water. All right, so we are getting hatted up and we are gonna go water some. Yay, so the peas have survived. It's interesting because on video, you can almost tell that I think they're a little sad. Um, I, I kind of believe plants have some sort of emotional life intelligence. You can tell they want water. Um, I don't know why, because it's like they're green. They're not nearly as struggling as I thought they might be after a few days of me ignoring them. Um, but as you can tell also, if I get a little closer, there are so many bees on them. And I really just want to show you for all those kind of urban farmers, it, it is kind of what everybody out there says. You just don't have to have that many plants to be able to be producing. It's interesting because the, um, the plant particles, particles, branches, threads, I don't know what that part of the pea plant is called that are growing up top there. They're not producing peas. I don't know why if they're growing up, they're not producing peas. If they were falling low, they are producing peas. That is interesting to me. You can tell that my green onions need a little bit of water. Cilantro has been so hard to grow here in California and that's what I've, I've seen online. It is bolting. I don't know why I'm not eating it in our little spinach plants I keep watering them they're so cute but they have never taken off here so um that is just exciting to me though that I haven't killed again I just want to show you my face I am actually really excited that I have not killed the bees and now we are going to water some peas 